Hey guys, JH. Welcome back to the practice tea. And Mr. X has come out here today and mowed a little bit of the grass. If you look over there, it's two feet deep. Probably more than that. But it's just a big recovery coming back here from the floods. Big. Big. Just cost the guy that owns the range and the golf course here so much money. And he's such a good guy. Okay, guys. Just a couple of things today. Uh, if you're tuning in to buy you golf, which you should, Matt Gray is doing uh, an expose on a number of different facets of the channel lock swing. And one of the ones that he's going to be getting into, and we're both going to liaise with each other on it, um, is the balance and posture structure. Now, Matt's already put out one video already with the basic elements of what he's going to be discussing going forward. And the good thing about, about Matt Gray is that it's just like when I hear Matt talk it's almost and when he's you know explaining the channel lock and the nuances of channel lock it's almost as if it's almost as if <laughs> he has part of the channel lock evolutionary thinking but the good thing about him is he's he's looked at the baseline premise of channel lock and he's put in a few um, additions to it and options which we always talk about options because everybody's different and you should be able to put in something that will suit you okay guys now my take on on posture is and, and, I, and I think it's exactly the same with Matt because if you look at him I mean he just stands to the ball in, in what I call perfect homeostasis of his of his uh, if his body physical he just looks like he is where he should be and I guess that's probably the best terminology get yourself where you should be for you and Matt does that. If you see Matt just standing there. And everybody says, why do I call Matt Matty? Everybody in Australia, guys, is a, is, a, is, a, is a why. If you're a Bob, you're a Bobby. If you're a Dave, you're a Davey. If you're a Ken, you're a Kenny. If you're a Suze, Suze, you're a Susie. So everybody's an E. So Matt being a Matt, the Australian version of Matt's name is a Matty. And I've got so many friends named Matt, and they're all Matty, so <laughs> that's why I call him Matty. Okay, guys. Homeostasis, or equilibrium. There, there are two, there, there are two uh, facets of balance, and that is horizontal center of gravity and vertical center of gravity. And you have to balance those out against each other so that they form a basically a, a situation or a circumstance of of homeostasis I mean that's where it is nothing's going on it's just it's just there in place and what do I do what do I feel I feel like I've got a heavy butt I never want to feel and Matt Matt said Matty said that he feels like when he's if he's not basically sitting into the ground that he feels on the downswing he's going this way falling that way and when you get that 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 feeling of falling that way and that propensity to fall that way what you do in order to balance that falling forward is counterbalance and, and Matt used that terminology the other day uh, and, and the counterbalance is such that you will do something to counteract falling forward and invariably with a club player as he's coming down he's falling forward he pushes himself backwards but he thrusts his pelvis out and that's what you call the early extension which is what you see in the in the club player as, as they're going forward they'll do this they'll early extend up like that now you should always endeavor when you're hitting the ball to be going that way 
but you don't want to be going that way which is a counterbalancing move to the force going out that way and the energy going that way I mean if you look at Hogan and you look at Mo Norman did it better than anybody this was Mo Norman at impact the best impact position I've ever seen of anybody that ever played golf it was perfect it was here and he said to me he said my hands and my arms and my club head are going there <laughs> but my lower body is going there and that's what balances it and particularly for channel lock guys because we want to be with channel lock generally we want to be here when we hit it so if you can be we want to be here when we hit it but if we can be here when we hit it actually feeling the weight is into the heels rather than the, the front portion of the foot so how do we do that how do we apply that well guys it's conscious you've got to learn it everything we do is a learned process so once we take the club to the top and we start down we should be feeling like as we start down the club's going out but we're going here like that That, 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 that buttock section and the back of the, the, the upper leg, the, um, uh, the hamstring area, that's moving this way. But the energy is moving that way. And the upper body is moving with intention that way, even though it's staying back in its swing axis. We don't want to change that swing axis. Or as, or, as, or as Matt Gray terms it, wants to swing within the door frame. And when you've got that going out there, the door frame's here, guys. Great, great descriptive terminology. Stay within the door frame. Whatever you can do and stay within the door frame and get extension through the ball, that's the key. That's, uh, that's, that really is a great descriptive of what we need to be doing. All right, so how do we how do we put all that together? Okay, we're talking about channel lock here. So back foot ball position here. As we're taking it back here, we're into the channel early, and we've got our auto load here. As we start down, we want to feel like we sit into our into our upper legs and our knee joints. Once we've got here, and we start down, we want to feel like we're going here. An impact. Post impact, of course, we're moving up and around, as Mo Norman did. Mo, Mo Norman, <laughs> at the post impact was here, and then he went up to finish. He didn't sort of stay here and go around like that, because the momentum will, will keep you going in that direction, and you'll want to stand up to balance yourself to stop yourself getting pulled forward. Now I don't want to complicate this too much, but the basic message is we should be trying to the channel lock clearly being hit, hitting into out with closed lead shoulder, which means the trail shoulder is closed, firing it out there, sitting back, but also post impact we've got to be getting the feeling that everything is going towards the target, which is what I what I uh, touched on the other day where we get that whole trail side past the golf ball and and basically keep going as if it wanted to go around there that's the intention if it wanted to go around there and keep going now that's very confusing to apply that to channel lock because and a couple of the guys have said JH but you've always advocated hitting with channel lock hitting out and up. Well, you still do that, guys, as an intention. But after you've contacted the ball and, and you've applied that intention of out and up, the out and up turns into up and around and forward. It doesn't keep going out and up because if you go out and up, you'll cut off the velocity of your rotation. Okay, the ball's gone, but thinking to have that rotation is going to develop more energy coming down at impact 
if, if we think that we want to finish over here and around. So we're not changing the original uh, edict of, of in to out and up. It's, it's in, in to out as a, as a thought of up, but post impact, it's then continue on and around with the trail shoulder just rocketing over here. So that was a little confusing the other day and I can understand that confusion prevailing. Even though uh, we've mowed the grass, it's still pretty, pretty gnarly. As you can see here guys, look, it's six inches tall. Okay, now the other thing, when we do take the, the club back in the backswing with our auto load and we get it back here and, and we're wound up as much as we can, how do we start that downswing? And eliminate the potential of starting it with the upper body or, or the throw of the hands and arms. How do we eliminate that? Very simple. Well, very simply. Guys, when you get to the top of the backswing, in any golf swing this is, it was actually the cornerstone of, of Nick Faldo's golf swing when he remodeled it and went on to play that fantastic golf for 10 years. And that is that once you're at the top of the backswing here, okay, how do we get the downswing started? Actually, it's very easy, guys. We're here, we're coiled. This has basically been the last thing to stop moving so it ends up being the first thing to start moving in the downswing. So we've gone to the top here, then all we do, I'll give you a look from this angle. All we do after we've got to that position at the top, is what I call stalling out. We've stalled out the backswing. We've got to here, and the lead knees come in. All we do then is take that lead knee and move it in a semicircle, like that, towards the target go here and then we just move it like that not sideways in a semicircle a radius and I promise you guys that does that does the most exquisite sequencing of the golf swing of the downswing the part of the downswing it just it's just like a magic automatic move it's just quite extraordinary and it was the keystone or the cornerstone to uh, to uh, Nick Faldo's golf swing. He told me that personally. So he said, when I get here, when I'm at the top of the swing here, the top of the swing here, it's just that. And we saw it no better illustrated and demonstrated than with Sam Snead. Sam Snead had the best process of that of anyone that's ever played the game. And that's why he looked like this in the downswing, guys. He went to the top here, and then he went like that. And that's why he got that bow-legged look. And, and Peter Thompson told me, unashamedly, that Hogan was a great player and a good, great, a good ball striker, a great ball striker, but Sam Snead was a better ball striker. His contact was better than Hogan's. Now that's almost heretical to say that, but Peter Thompson said that. He believed it and so did Tommy Bolt. Tommy Bolt said that Sam Snead was a better ball striker in terms of contact than Ben Hogan. Ben Hogan was a better player, uh, but uh, that's interesting, isn't it? And I must say, I've seen Snead practice in, uh, in the flesh, came to Australia in, in the late 70s, and, uh, and I saw him here, and, and I have saw him in, in, uh, in later years in, in, in America doing some Wilson clinics and, and, and really the sound he made and the contact was amazing. But guys, he did this. He went, he, like, like, like conventional golf swing, he went to here and then it was this. Now look what happens. Okay, if we go here and we do that, if I do that down, down the line, take the club back here, auto load it, get it to here, and then I just move that lead knee, look what happens to the golf club. The golf club shallows and backloads. That's what I call backloading. It doesn't forward load. 
and it stops stops this happening in the golf swing if you get to the top of the swing and you're dead in the legs the only way you can get the golf club started down is with the shoulders or the hands and if you do that guys it's got to go that way but if you let the hands be passive at the top of the golf swing here get it up the top here and then just move that lead knee it's a set and, and it's for every golf swing guys every single golf swing pitching full shots bunker shots that, that was the secret of the great Norman Von Nieder who was regarded by Gary Player Norman Von Nieder was an Australian player in the 50s and 60s and he was regarded as the best bunker player of all time and he told me Norman told me himself he said I hit the ball with my lead knee <laughs> all I think about in the downswing is doing that getting here and then moving my knees and keeping my knees he said you know fluid and oily so you can do it with everything guys okay that's just an exp explanation of that what else if you're getting to my age guys you've got to refer to <laughs> to, uh, th to things okay we've spoken about about the um, <coughs> the butt being back in the downswing moving in this direction and guys really if you move if you move that lead knee like that it actually helps you to do that little squat a tiny little drop squat here see as soon as I do that I get that sort of drop and back type placement of mass or positioning of the mass now guys it's late in the day we may be able to get some some visuals down range today I'll try and hit some shots downrange I'll have a look and if, uh, if I can get the right type of contrast on the camera we'll hit some shots downrange and Titleist have just introduced their new range ball which apparently is a you know an A grade top of the line golf ball that's just made for or just stamped for, for playing with uh, as a range ball but it's actually a, a top quality um, Titleist um, golf ball so we've got some today they gave us a whole bunch to try so um, we'll see what they're like okay guys I'll just um, I'll come back hit a couple of shots and then we'll hit a couple down range and and see if we can see the ball uh, because what, what I want, want to do is just check that the camera's been playing up I just want to make sure that, that my time framing is okay and I'm not running out of time uh, so I'll do that, come back, I'll hit a few shots and I'll hit some downrange.